Hello, everybody. This is the Active Trades Weekly Catch Up, where every Friday we look at the events dominating the news agenda. We focus on geopolitics and economics, keep an eye on the markets, and always look for trading ideas. On Monday, the Ever Given, a giant cargo ship that had been stranded for almost a week in the Suez Canal, was finally refloated. The Suez connects the Mediterranean to the Red Sea, cutting the journey time between Asia and Europe by a third, and it provides passage to about 10% of the world's trade, including 7% of the global oil exports. At some point, there were fears that the refloating of the giant ship could have taken weeks which would have seriously disrupted the global supply chain and triggered a series of further problems and backlogs in global shipping that could have taken months to clear. The cost to the global trade business caused by this incident is estimated to have been around 10 billion US dollars for each day the canal was blocked. And it forced shipping companies that were fearing long delays to start rerouting cargo around the Cape of Good Hope in South Africa. This triggered an immediate rise in oil prices and also caused a shortage of parts for car manufacturers and other industries that operate just-in-time stock management. This incident happened at the worst possible time, raising worries of a shortage of goods when the fear of inflation has been dominating the narrative in the financial markets as investors anticipate an explosion in economic activity in the aftermath of the pandemic, which may result from the gigantic monetary and fiscal stimulus currently being deployed. Meanwhile, in Europe, despite a rise in COVID cases and new lockdowns being imposed across the continent, there is hope that the second quarter will be a turning point in what has so far been a suboptimal rolling out of the vaccines. With production of jobs set to increase dramatically, it is expected that the EU will finally start to catch up with the more successful vaccination programs of the UK and the US. Financial markets started to react to this prospect, with the euro gaining ground versus both the dollar and the pound during the second half of the week. We all know that traders don't live in the moment. They are permanently trying to anticipate what is likely to happen in the future and pricing in any likely scenarios before they actually occur. The current euro gains provide a good illustration of this dynamic. Despite the rising number of cases and the imposition of fresh lockdowns across the continent, the single currency started rising as soon as reports emerged detailing the brighter outlook for the second quarter of the year. Should these expectations be confirmed, then more euro strength can be expected. But on the other side of the English Channel, the UK appears to be about to switch roles with the EU, with reports that the country may face a shortage of vaccines during the month of April due to supply issues. These are not good news for the pound, whose value has risen over the last few months on the back of the nation's successful vaccination campaign. Jumping across the Atlantic, we get to the United States, where the S&P 500 stock index hit a new all-time high, passing the 4,000-point mark for the first time in history, driven by a rampant tech sector that continues to be supported by the virus-controlling measures that keep many of us at home. This month's non-farm payrolls, which will be published after the recording of this video, are likely to play an important role in the market dynamics over the coming weeks, with investors likely to recalibrate their inflation fears according to the perceived health of the employment market in the United States. A disappointing result is likely to hold the recent rise in yields and generate dollar weakness, while anything exceeding expectations will surely have the reverse effect. Also worth keeping an eye on will be the US PMI numbers coming out on Monday and the minutes of the last FOMC meeting to be published on Wednesday. This is all for today. I will be back next Friday with more views on current affairs and the financial markets. 
In the meantime, you can go to activetrades.com for more market analysis. If you enjoyed this video, feel free to subscribe to our channel and give us a like. Thank you very much for watching.